Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener, and today I am planting bamboo. And I have four different types of bamboo that I'm going to be planting in two different ways. The first bamboo that I'm going to be planting is a Kanapaha Royal Bamboo. Uh, it's supposed to be a really pretty, nice, tight, clumping bamboo, nice and pretty. The second one is a really cool looking uh, bambusa. Uh, let me see if I can butcher this name correctly. Doli Chocolata, we're going to call it. It is a Nice bright yellow bamboo that gets these nice little striated stripes going up and down it. The third kind is a bamboosa old hammy, the Oldham's bamboo. It's, a, it's considered the construction bamboo, but it's not all that great for construction, oddly enough. And the one that I am going to be doing a lot of construction with in the future years is this bamboosa tolodius. Uh, this is the punting pole bamboo. This is the clumping style of bamboo. And this stuff will grow really nice, straight and tall, and get about one and a half to two inch canes going on it. So I should be able to make a lot of construction projects out of this around the yard. Should be really nice. And I'll be using a lot of these for different construction projects in future years. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel to get all those updates. Now this first bamboo that I'm going to be doing is the, uh, the royal bamboo. And this bamboo is going to be replacing where a magnolia tree used to be over uh, in between the two houses, sort of in the front yard. The magnolia tree about two years ago kind of got damaged by the hurricane that went through and it was leaning over quite a bit. I trimmed it up, tried to stand it up a bit and it just never really took off. And if you're going to have a magnolia tree, you want it to be a nice big pretty tree and in between these houses where it's shady for quite a bit of the day, it just wasn't really growing up fast enough, quick enough. And then there's the drainage problem. There's just a lot of issues over here. So I figured a raised bed with some bamboo in the center and uh, do a, a double raised garden bed, a raised garden bed inside of a raised garden bed. Just check this out. It'll look cool by the end. It's going to give a cool little effect so that we can have the clumping bamboo. Let me turn you around here so you can see what I'm working with here. This is the the raised bed that they tried to plant in. I honestly don't know what those people were thinking. I don't know why you'd plant a magnolia tree inside of a raised planter bed and then line the bottom of it with plastic. You can't grow a tree in a I don't even know what you'd call that. The roots were basically not able to get down into the ground and stay secure. So as soon as a, a category one hurricane comes through, yeah, pff, tree starts tipping over. So let's just set this right inside of here. There we go. Boom. Looks good, right? Yes. Keep it. Nah, just playing. So uh, let me go grab the raised bed and I've gone through a few of these raised beds trying to find the just right one. And there's a link in the description for the one I finally kept and I'm going to use for this project, which means I bought like three or four of them and sent two or three of them back because I was looking for the right one. Nice and sturdy and strong. That doesn't cost that much. So I already pre-assembled this one bed right here. There's two that come in the box. They're really easy to put together. I was just using a, uh, what is this, an 11 millimeter wrench. I tried using a star socket. It just couldn't quite grasp the, uh, the, the square nuts on here. Uh, and then I use an impact, you can use a screwdriver or whatever. They go together really easy. I'm not going to bore you with how do you put together a raised garden bed. It's simple, but you get two of them uh, in, in this box. So let's get this one outside and see what it looks like. And it's fairly lightweight, easy to carry around. Uh, I mainly like this one because this one I could pick up with my hands and not risk slicing my fingers open with on, on these uh, exposed edges. The, uh, the cut sides, they can be a little sharp, so just be careful when you're uh, putting it all together. But nice curled round edges so you don't cut your fingers. And then in future years you don't have to worry about you know putting a, a foam noodle or something around this thing or some sort of uh, you know something to protect fingers and hands from getting sliced off. All right, so where is a good spot? Beautiful, right there. I love it, it's perfect. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use this little ring that I kind of cut into the mud here to dig down a little trench about uh, yay far deep, because I don't want to be filling this whole thing up with uh, potting soil or you know jungle growth that I use. That stuff's expensive on its own without trying to you know put extra bags in on top. So if I bury this down a little bit, it'll keep the, the runners from being able to shoot out. The Royal Bamboo, it doesn't put out hard runners, uh, you know, into your neighbor's yard or anything like that. And it, it only stays like in the top, I think it's uh, 10 to 12 inches. So that's as far as I really have to go down with this. And even if I did put it down the 10 or 12 inches, I'm gonna be planting it up a bit into the uh, the raised bed anyway. So it's, it would really have to really go down far and it's just not gonna do that. So I'm gonna pick this up and go ahead and dig out that little area so I can sink this down and I'll be right back with you. Now that was a good deal of fun. As you can see, it's uh, quite muddy and mucky over here. And when the builders built this house, 
they graded the properties pretty well in between with the neighbor's house sloping down this away, my house sloping down this away, and then the whole thing sloping out to the street until they decided to put in the light pole, the power box, the AT&T fiber thing, the Comcast thing, and all the rest of the wires and plumbing. And they basically built a dam right here. So all the water just kind of backs up. So this is about the best I can do to get the water from the backyard that comes forward and in between the houses to kind of drain into a central line and it just get, gonna sit like a ditch until eventually I can figure out how to uh, fill this whole area in and raise up the whole ground level to get over the dam. No, okay, that's probably never gonna happen. But what I can do is plant a bunch of things right here uh, to help soak up and draw up all that water, uh, water loving plants. Uh, bamboo, if it's up high enough, it'll get its roots down into the dirt and soak up a lot of that water. And then the secondary ring, uh, it's going to be a really cool looking thing. I'm going to fill up with all kinds of swamp loving flower or swamp, swamp thriving flowers, swamp thriving flowers. Get some uh, swamp, uh, what's that stuff that monarchs like? milkweed get some swamp milkweed some cone flowers and just all kinds of just stuff that'll grow really well in muddy mucky environments to help uh, soak up and draw up all that water or at least that's the hope anyway back to business though uh so ooh, hello mr worm gotta love how many worms are in this dirt nice oh that's a good fishing worm right there okay so as you can see i've kind of made like a little donut and uh, kept it down from the top edge just a bit so I'm going to fill in about half of that hole with some jungle growth, put the uh, bamboo root ball in on top of that about halfway deep, and then kind of backfill the whole thing with another bag of the jungle growth, and then layer on top of that with a layer of wood chips, and we're going to call this done. So uh, let's go ahead and grab some jungle growth and have a little bit more fun, if you can call this fun. It's going to look nice, though. So when I say that I use jungle growth a lot on all of my plants, I don't want you to think that like I'm joking with this. Just went down to Lowe's and for today's project, I've got uh, 12 bags of the jungle growth and you can use your frog dirt or whatever else it is that you like to use. It's all pretty good and about the same stuff. It's well decomposed. Uh, it, it, you're not gonna see a bunch of uh, sticks and woody flaky things or garbage and trash in there. You wanna make sure you get a high quality, uh, well composted uh, professional mix of stuff so we can grow bigger plants for a greener planet this isn't sponsored at all although if jungle growth ever wanted to sponsor me drop off a pallet please i'm gonna need one okay so the first thing we're gonna do fill in our hole just a bit probably a bit too much there that's fine spread that out a bit and go ahead and loosen up our root ball which on these they appear to be very well root bound which is a good and bad thing it's gonna hold on to the soil real well. Give it a little push up from the bottom. Ooh, yeah. Look at all them roots. Let me give you a nice close up of it so you can see. Very nice, well-developed roots all the way around. I'm gonna loosen these up just a little bit so some of these roots can start growing out into the soil just a bit. Ooh, that is very wet down there too. So just massage these just a little bit get them to encourage to be out and about go run around and play Ooh, that's a hurry one there we go and then that's above the uh, the soil surface for all of this uh, I don't know clay planting mix grass roots leaves there's all kinds of stuff in here it'll be good stuff to break down over time I'm gonna backfill this whole thing with the rest of the bag of jungle growth level it out just a bit yep and then we're gonna have just a few inches left on top that we can fill in with some wood chips give us nice mulch to break down over time one bag was just perfect very nice now i'm not going to bore you with the uh filling of it with wood chips let's go ahead and get started on the second type of way that i'm going to use to plant my bamboo i don't know why i like calling it bamboo i just like saying boo bamboo Ooh, it is another hot one out here today all right, sweat through a hat. Good thing I got some spares. I'm gonna need them. Okay, so the next one up is gonna be the Oldham's bamboo or the uh, the bambusa old hammy. Old hammy eye? 
however you say that. And that's gonna be this guy right here. And since I'm already pretty well aware of what his growth habit is gonna be like, I'm not gonna worry about putting this in a, uh, in sort of a container or a bed or some sort of constrictive way, because I'm sort of wanting to, as this thing progressively grows out, trim two of the sides of the circle. Do circles have two sides like that? and sort of form it into a long line so that it kind of forms like a hedge uh, eventually over you know the next five, 10 years or whatever it's gonna be. And we're gonna plant it right over here down in between the blackberries and the loquat, I think. I kind of blocked the air conditioner just a bit. So right up here in this area, I just did something really dangerous. I turned off the air conditioner. Never turn off the air conditioner. I so know better than to do this. But this way, at least you can hear me talk without the uh, the A10 of an AC going. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see here. So right there about where that stick is, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and plant it so that you can see it from back a little ways, kind of in between the, uh, the, the blackberry line that I've got going here and the air conditioner just to help uh, block off this area. And it has an added benefit of blocking off this area right here from any would-be neighbor's view. And you're probably wondering, why would you want to block off that corner back there from the neighbor's view? Well, I've got this thing called an HOA that uh, has a very restrictive shed policy. And there's a really cool, like a lean-to type metal uh, shed that I can get. And I've, I'm not sure if you can see, I raised up the fence just enough so that from the street, you won't be able to see it. The roof will slant down and there's a door that'll go right here into it and it'll just be like this uh, hallway kind of thing that'll go from the edge of the house out to about here down to the fence it's about that big so it'll be just enough room to go in between the air conditioner and the shed to get in that access door that away and then that way no neighbors will be able to see the shed i guess nobody would be able to complain to the hoa that i put a shed in without asking Shh. and if nobody can see it then nobody can complain about it let's get that air conditioner turned back on before i get in trouble or before I sweat to death and need it. And now the fun part where we get to bury this thing in. And I'm going to be using two whole bags of the, uh, this is one and a half cubic feet, I think, of jungle growth. Just put one on either side and just kind of round it out and make it into a uh, little volcano. There we go. Now take this one and kind of push it around to the this away. Grab this pile and bring it over to the this away. And my theory here with this is that it's basically growing above ground with a nice big huge mound of soil up around it. And this will get back filled in with the wood chips that will then slowly break down and provide some good uh, food for it. Now let's go ahead and rake this around. I'm going to grab the little rake first and then the big rake just to make it all look pretty. And there we go. As simple and easy as that. And I know it's kind of hard to see the, uh, the 3D effect of all this, but it's really not that big of a mound when compared to the surrounding area. It's nice and uh, slopey, if that's a word. This way, all the rain that comes down uh, will kind of disperse out and around. And I'm not sure if you can see from that angle where the gutter comes down, it's gonna pour water right here and it goes out that way towards the front of the house where you just saw earlier. And all that water kind of pools with the dam they built. What can you do? Well, I guess what I'm doing is uh, planting this to help soak it all up. So let's go on to the third, we're gonna call this a hybrid planting 
Uh, it's going to kind of combine the theories of the first way with the raised bed and the second way here with the planting it on top of the ground at the same time, kind of doing both. Now, the next bamboo I'm going to be planting is the Bambusa toluitis. I know I'm going to murder that one. Uh, planting pole bamboo. This one's going to go in the hybrid type location, and it has grown quite a bit. It's almost doubled in size in just the one week that I've had it so far. So let's go ahead and get this thing in the ground. Well, above ground. Now this one's going to go back over here in the corner, which kind of messes up a few things because, or it fixes things. I'm, I'm not sure which way you want to look at that. So it's going to be planted really close to this blueberry. This is the Austin blueberry. And so this one might need to get moved forward a little bit in between the, uh, the methylene plum and the sweet lime over there. Just kind of, you know, get it a little bit more sun. And it might also kind of, you know, make a little path as I'm snacking on my yard. Then the next thing is it's kind of blocking out this uh, Camellia centesis. This is a, a tea bush here. It's going to have to go out there someplace different and hopefully grow up nice and big and give me some tea leaves to, to make my own tea. But this is going to kind of block off this whole corner and hopefully shade out some of that tree right up above me because that's a neighbor's tree and I keep having to chop off limbs that come uh, over my fence because I don't want their tree in my yard. So I'm going to go ahead and get this dug out, uh, kind of how we did the other one. Go ahead and get all the, uh, the wood chips out of here and then sink this down to ground level and then we'll mound it up from there. Let me bring you in a little bit closer and dig this out. Uh, this should be fun to try and figure out how deep this thing needs to go. Oh, wow. Let me bring you in here close. You gotta see how much mycelial fungus is in this stuff. So if you know anything about mycelial fungus, it's, a, it's the part of the fungus that actually forms the roots and actually bonds to the plant's roots. This stuff wants sugar. These plants produce sugar, but these plants need nitrogen, water, all kinds of other minerals and things. So this fungus goes out and finds it, breaks down all the wood fibers and gets all the lignin broke down then takes its nutrients, gives it to the plant, and then the plant produces sugars that the fungus wants. So that's what this stuff is doing. And this soil is just covered with awesome mycelial fungus down through here. And it's just all through here. This is the point of wood chips. This is what you want. This is some amazing stuff. And here I go destroying the whole operation. Well, at least it's already here and it can go ahead and spread its wealth around the other plants. So I'm just going to carefully spread some of this stuff around because this isn't going to be used initially for most of this planting. And that's just crazy how thick that stuff is. All right, I'll be right back with you once I have this uh, circle kind of dug out because this is some deep mulch. I'm going to have to go down a ways to get to the bottom right back with you and there we go i got it kind of sort of dug around in a circle good enough anyway for no how's it go oh yeah good enough for who it's for so i'm gonna go ahead and get this back filled in a bit with some dirt uh, i'm just gonna go ahead and put a entire bag of jungle growth on here i wasn't sure exactly how many bags to grab so i just put them on the cart and grabbed four at least this way I've got some way to get them back and forth. That way I'm not trying to stress out trying to carry these heavy bags back and forth. I ain't that strong. I see wimpy. All right, let's see just how far one bag will go. Yeah, not too bad. We're gonna call that a good base layer. Push that around just a little bit. This is going to be an expensive bed to fill up. So if you've got uh, any Hugo culture techniques that you want to throw in here, you go right on ahead. I went ahead and put that base layer down right there. I'm going to shovel some of these, uh, these chunks of the mycelial fungus that's already broken down that wood real well. Go ahead and shovel some of those in there, get a, a layer of dirt, layer of that compost. I don't think it's going to steal that much nitrogen from it to begin with. But then this way I can go ahead and do some uh, layers, just kind of help fill it up a bit. I don't think I have any logs. I don't even think I want to put logs or anything like that in here. I'm just going to dump some of these extra wood chips in here just for some filler. Toss on a couple more bags. Uh, dig a little thing in the center. We'll get this on here.
Okay, now that we've got that filled in just a little bit more, this is up to the original soil level, I would call it. So I think another two or three bags should be enough, along with throwing the uh, actual plant in there. So let's go ahead and get this thing in. And just like normal, I'm gonna go ahead and get a single squeeze. And this one is a bit of a, a rarity. So this one I already know is extremely root bound. Uh, I can feel the canes trying to poke through here on the sides. I actually put a, a layer of the jungle growth on top of here about a week ago when I first got it, just because I could see nothing but roots on the top of this thing, just poking out and coming through. And rather than uh, try and smash this thing and, and yank it out, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this pot because I got enough of them. I, I don't need to save this one. So I'm just gonna cut this thing open like a flower, sort of. Give it a slice down one side over a little bit slice it down the other side do that a couple more times and then just lay it open like a flower and this way we don't damage too much of it trying to rip this thing out there we go yeah extremely extremely root bound so let me set this thing in here we'll loosen it up just a little bit yeah this is root bound as that thing is i don't want to go cutting a bunch of the roots i mean i probably could but Eh, oh well. Oh, this is a dangerous work area. Got pitchforks going in my boot. Dump in a bag. I hope three bags is enough. Dump in a second bag. And a third bag if I don't block it you too close. So if you do ever decide to get one of these beds, oh, I forgot my gloves. Uh, once you backfill it just a little bit, three bags looks like it'd be enough. Let me shuffle this around and uh, see what we can do. Now that doesn't look too bad. I did slightly mount it just a little bit so that the, uh, the water that gets up on here won't pool on top of that root ball. It'll just kind of roll off to the sides. Uh, let's go ahead and fill this thing up with just a little bit more wood chips. Uh, fill in the sides over here where I dug out too much. And I think we're gonna call this one good to go. This would be hat change number four, in case you're counting. All right, so we got this uh, all kinds of prettied up. You can still see the strings of mycelial fungus just sitting all over right here i kind of feel bad for those guys but oh well you'll you'll keep going i'm sure uh, i got it all prettied up we'll just uh at the end here tidy this up with a little bit of extra wood mulch i'm pretty sure i've got some left i do need to oddly call it my guy again i think i'm gonna just have him dump out like two dump truck loads of of wood chips that, that should do me for a little bit i hope i don't know though sometimes i wonder Okay, so this uh, the fourth one, the last one, uh, is the, I wanted to get the, it's called Sunburst. They didn't have any in stock. They had a striated version of it, they said. And it is called Bambusa Dolicholaclada. Hang on, Bambusa Dolicholaclada. Yeah, striata. The striata is these little yellow stripes right here, but it makes this really pretty yellow cane with the green stripes. I think I like it a little bit better than the Sunburst. The Sunburst was just a super bright yellow cane. And since this is a special one, I think I'm gonna plant it pretty much the same way that I did the, uh, the Bambus Old Hammy, but I'm gonna put it someplace where we'll be able to see it and enjoy it and let it get as big as it wants to get. Cause eventually right here, there's going to be a pergola built. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one. I'm not sure when I'll get around to doing that one. Uh, I've got a bunch of papayas though right here and, and i'll be honest i'm pretty sure that they're all going to die over the winter time so i don't have any high hopes of them surviving so i think i'm just going to plant it right here in the center so that it'll be right next to what will be the uh the pergola area right here so that we can see it and enjoy it i'm not sure if you can hear that frog but that dude has been going nuts for like two days i'm pretty sure he's in the tarot right over there so i'm gonna go ahead and get this dug out and planted make sure you like and subscribe if you like these sorts of things uh, it, it really does help a small channel like this to hit that like button and feel free to subscribe. I'm going to keep doing these regardless of likes and subscribes just because I enjoy doing it and hopefully you enjoy watching. That frog needs to find a girlfriend. Oh, hey, check this out.
my little goji berry still in the pot uh haven't gotten it planted out just yet but it's given me a little goji berry and i've never had one of these before so i don't even know like when are these things ripe and what do they taste like so you know there's another one right next to it and it looks like i got a few flowers so i'm gonna pick this thing it's just a little goji berry and let's see what it tastes like oh there's a seed in it tastes like a tomato but tiny. I don't think that one was right. That was kind of bitter. I guess better luck to me next time. And it looks like there's quite a few flowers on here, quite a few future opportunities to uh, try a new goji berry. Uh, I think I'm gonna let them get a little bit more red though for the next uh, taste test. That was kind of bitter. Yeah. All right, on to hat number five. So I just got off of Amazon and I ordered another planter bed. And it is really cool looking. I got a very interesting idea. So you'll want to stay tuned for that next video when I uh, put that other bed together and make a little design out of it. It's, it's gonna be really cool. Stay tuned. Here we go. Here's the striata. Uh, I'm gonna murder this one again. Bambusa. You know what? From now on, I'm just gonna call this starburst. No, not starburst. Sunburst. Uh, striated sunburst because it's like sunburst, but it's striated. Lines. So there we go. Uh, it's going to be smack dab right here in the middle of all of these papayas, which I'm assuming that they won't survive the winter, unfortunately. And as I walk over here, show you the front view. Got the hunting pole all nicely mulched in, looking all nice and pretty. And over here is going to be the uh, bamboo's old hammy. And there's a really cool click beetle over here. Let me see if I can find it. There he is. Check that guy out. That is a, an Eastern-eyed click beetle. Very cool beetle. It, uh, it was chasing me. Hey, buddy. Yeah. He, if you touch him on his back, he's, he, he pops real fast. It's kind of cool. So we got the uh, bamboo old hammy over here behind the uh, blackberries and kind of going to be shielding all that area. Now, let me take you around front here. And here's the finished product then of the soggy front yard area, the Royal Bamboo. And this is where I'm going to be making the second ring around all of this here with a different kind of raised garden bed tomorrow. Uh, Amazon says they're going to have it tomorrow, so cool. Uh, I don't mind next day delivery, but it's going to be a, a nifty little design. And you're going to want to stay tuned to see that because I'm kind of excited about it, if nothing else. It's going to be a cool design. I'm going to get it all filled in and then have to wait until spring to put in flowers. So you'll then have to wait even longer and stay tuned for that as well. So keep those thumbs green, pass away, and know that you are appreciated.